happened? Everybody have a seat. You guys still fired up this morning? You guys haven't fallen asleep on me yet, have you? All right, I know we've had a long, incredible service. We got a little bit longer before we get to the food, so just stick with me, all right? Well, uh, it's incredible to be here this morning. Let's go ahead and give another round of applause for everybody who's participated in service so, so far. I mean, Solomon. I didn't know Solomon could preach the word. That, that was like, that was a communion in itself right there. I'm like, I don't, I could go home. We're good. But, bro, thank you so much for bringing us to the cross this morning. It's awesome. And then Ryan with the powerful contribution message. Amen. You know, but this morning, I really want to talk about something that we all need. I want to talk about something that we all want. All right. Come on. And it's a powerful, powerful topic. What is it? It's something that wars have been fought over. Right. It's something that movies have been made about. Okay. It's something that poems have been written about. Okay. Something that people go crazy over. Okay. And I want to talk about love this morning. Yeah. You know, love is powerful. If you've been in love before, it'll drive you to do some crazy things. It will drive you to do some crazy things. I know Karen, uh, when we were dating, I'm not saying it's because she loved me or anything, but she moved all the way to Columbus, Ohio from Southern California. That was some real love right there, babe. That was good. But, but everybody loves to love and loves to be loved. It's what we all want. Now I just want to open it up. What are some things that you guys love? Go ahead. I want to open it up. Sweetheart. You. Oh. I'm out there. I'm out. Thanks, sweetheart. Coach. Food. Who else? Who else? What? Dolphins. Okay. Eddie. Eddie. Animals. Okay. Some things I love is God, my wife, tacos, and the beach. Amen. Those are some things I love. You know, but do you know that we're actually commanded to love in the Bible? That it's not a suggestion, it's an actual command. And this morning, I want to look at three things that we are commanded to love. Go ahead and turn your Bibles to Mark chapter 12. The title of my lesson is Commanded to Love. Amen? My first point is love God. Let's go to Mark chapter 12. Let me get an amen when you guys get there. In Mark chapter 12 and verse 28, it says, One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, Of all the commandments, which is the most important? So you have to imagine what is going on. Jesus is debating the Sadducees. And this teacher of law comes up and he says, Wow, this guy Jesus knows what he's talking about. I mean, he's refuting these guys. He's not, he's not letting them have their way at all. He's sorting them out right here. And he asked them, what is the most important commandment? And if you could ever ask God a question, I know when he answers the anticipation right there, you're like, oh my gosh, what is he going to say? And what is it that Jesus says in verse 29? He says, the most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. And right here, Jesus says that the most important command, the most important thing that you can do is to love God. Is to love God. Not the way that I love tacos, amen. Not the half-hearted right there. But with every essence of your being, everything that you embody, that you love God with all your soul, all your heart, all your mind, and all your strength, that that's the most important thing that we can do. You know, but I think we live in a world today where a lot of people say that they love God. They say that, they claim it. But how can we know that somebody actually loves God? Let's go to 1 John chapter 5. You guys with me this morning? In 1 John in chapter 5, let me get an amen when you guys get there. In verse 3, it says, This is love for God, to obey His commands. And His commands are not burdensome. Amen. So how can we tell? How do we know if somebody actually loves God? They do what He says. 
To love God is to obey God. It's not to say you love God. It's not to worship Him on Sundays. Yes, these things are good. But to actually love God is to actually do what He says. So if somebody claims that they love God, but they don't obey God, then either they're lying or they're deceived. And we have got to know that we love God. We have got to actually love God by obeying God. Are you obeying God this morning? If you're not, then you actually don't love God this morning. To obey God is to love God. You know, there's a book that came out. Many of us might know it. It's called The Five Love Languages. Anybody ever read this book? I have. And now it's, it's a good uh, book for, for relationships, for marriages. But pretty much it boils it down that everybody has a love language. You can have one or multiple. And the five ones, quality time, acts of service, uh, gifts, what are some more, physical touch, and words of affirmation. Now this is good because people feel loved by one of these ways or multiple of these ways. Now, for me and Karen, I'm totally an acts of service guy. All the way, if you, if you make me breakfast in the morning, I'm fired up. Oh my gosh. But Karen, she's a gifts, gifts gal, and she's words of affirmation. So I can, you know, if I tell her something really nice and sweet, or if I get her a gift, she feels super loved. But I feel like, and I know that oftentimes we love the way that we want to be loved. You, you know what I mean? So I love acts of service, so there'll be times I'm, I'm washing the dishes, I'm vacuuming the house, and I'm expecting like a, a, an applause, you know? Like, like, babe, you see my service to you? You see my love for you right here? And then she's like, oh, thank you so much, babe. High five. What? I just poured out my heart and my soul to clean the house right here. I love you, you know? <clears throat> but that's not the way that she feels loved. But in the same way, she loves to give me gifts. And she'll give me gifts all the time. And in the same way, I'm like, oh, thank you so much, sweetheart. High five. Good. And she's like, I just thought about you. I got you this gift. Oh, my gosh. I think the biggest time is when we were in Ohio. And it was for my birthday last year. And we go out to eat at this incredible breakfast place. We get some eggs. It's awesome. But there... I kid you not, she brings in like this three-tier box. It looks like a wedding cake, and it's got a gift inside of each box. That's awesome. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And it's all decorated nice. It's like, I love you on there, all nice, you know, like it's all did up. And in there, there's a jacket, there's some sweatpants, there's a long sleeve shirt, because it gets cold in Ohio. You need that stuff. And she puts so much into it. Well, me... Maybe I hadn't read the five love languages at that point in time, amen? But I'm just like, babe, thank you so much. This is awesome. Good to go. That's it. And I remember she was like discouraged. I just put all my time and effort into getting you this incredible gift. And I just feel like you didn't even appreciate it. Now, thank God for discipling and some repentance right there. But she didn't feel loved by that. In the same way, we all have love languages. But so does God. God has a love language. And what is his love language? It's obedience. And that's how God feels loved. And so if you want to love God this morning, the only way to do it is you must obey his commands. There's no other way. And that command, it's not conditional. Love the Lord your God with all your heart if you feel loved by other people. If it's the right time for you. If your life is an okay place, it doesn't say any of that. There's no condition to the promise. You have got to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. You've got to obey God. Amen. I'm going to challenge all of us. Recommit yourself to loving God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength. Not the way that you think God wants to be loved, but the way he actually feels loved. If this is your first time out, study the Bible with the person who brought you. Figure out how can I obey God? How can I do that? And maybe you've been here a little while and you've just started to slip a little bit. Recommit yourself to loving God with all your heart. My second point is love God's people. Let's go to John chapter 13. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. <clears throat> Come on, Joey. Go, Joey. 
<clears throat> and you know, it's interesting. After Jesus says that, he says, and the second is like it. Love, the, love your neighbor as yourself. Well, let's see if he continues on with this in John chapter 13 and verse 34. It says, a new command I give you. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Well, what is the command here? To love one another. Now, the last command was love the way that you want to be loved. Well, what if you don't love yourself? That's justification. I don't have to love anybody. And so Jesus tightens it up right here. He says, hey, you've got to love but you have to love the way that I loved you. Yeah. What was Jesus willing to do? Die for us. Yeah. What needs to be the extent of our love that we're willing to die for one another? Yeah. On, now, amen, we don't die for each other every day, you know. We, th thank God a little bit, we, you know, we want to live. But how can we do this? What else does this look like? Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, Let me know when you guys get there. In verse 4, this might be one of the most challenging scriptures in the whole Bible. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Man, that's challenging right there. But it's interesting because in the Greek, the word love right here means self-sacrificing love. Well, how did Jesus love us? Self-sacrifice. So this is the same way that he loved us. This is how we have to love everybody else. This is how we have to love one another with this type of love. Man, and this challenges me. And I just want us to meditate where the word love is. If you put Jesus' name there, it checks out. Perfect. Jesus was patient. Jesus was kind. Jesus never failed. But what if we put your name there? How much of it would check out? I know. I would not check out. <laughs> Joey fails all the time. That's it. That's one right there. But how would it check out? Are you patient? Are you kind? Are you self-seeking? Are you easily angered? Do you keep records of wrong? Are you really loving the way that Jesus calls you to love? We are commanded. This is not a suggestion. And let me tell you something, love is not a feeling, it's an action. That's why you can be commanded to love. I can't command you to feel sad. I can't command you to feel happy, but I can command you to an action and so can the Bible. Love is a command and we must love one another. Amen. You know, this makes me think about my life before a Christian though. I was the exact opposite on the list. Every one of these I did not have. I was impatient, I was rude, I was very easily angered. And I think a lot of it, just to be open with you guys, it stemmed from my bitterness towards my dad. And I, I had to forgive my father. There was a lot of things that was just deep in my heart that I, I couldn't give up, it seemed like. And I was angry at him. I felt some type of way towards him. But. I remember reading a quote about bitterness in particular. And it says, bitterness is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. That's bitterness. And that's what my bitterness was doing towards me. But I'll never forget studying, being commanded to love, amen, and forgiving my dad. I know, and I, if, I felt so light. I felt so good. And on June 5th, when I got baptized, I came up as a new creature and I felt so good and I forgave my dad, amen? 
How do you feel towards one another this morning? Are you loving? Do you fulfill the command of Jesus? Or is there somebody you got to forgive? Is there somebody you have to talk to? And you know what the scary thing is? It might be yourself. But we must love one another. It's not okay not to love one another. So we have to love God. We have to love God's people. And my last point is we must love the lost. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 1. You guys still with me this morning? 1 Timothy in chapter 1. Hello. In chapter 1 and verse... 15, let me know when you guys get there. In 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 15, it says, Here's a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. And right here, Paul says, Hey, here is a trustworthy saying. You must believe this. Jesus came into the world to save sinners. That was it. He didn't have a, a plan B. He didn't have a career choice as a back door. He literally came here to save sinners. And Paul knew this. He's like, man, by Jesus' life, I can see that he came here to save sinners. You know, I know Tom Brady to be a great NFL quarterback by what he does. I know Denzel Washington to be a great movie actor because of what he does. What do people know you for? What do people know you for? Is it for this? Or is it for something else? And in fact, is this just for Jesus? Or is this for us today? Let's go to Matthew chapter 28 real fast. Matthew 28. In verse 18, it says then... Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. pick a I'm God. If you didn't know, now you know. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you, and surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. Jesus says, hey, you have got to go make disciples. He doesn't say, hey, go make Christians. He doesn't say, go make good people. He doesn't say, go make churchgoers. You have got to make disciples. And if you don't know what that is, and man, we need to study it out from the Bible, amen? But this is what we're commanded to do. It's not an option. In the same way, we have got to seek and save the lost. And this is a double-edged scripture right here. For one, disciples make disciples. So each disciple, each person needs to be making disciples. But also he says of all nations. So now we need a movement that's making disciples all over the world. The evangelization of the nations. You know, and I just want to lift up my brother Solomon, who did an incredible job with communion today. You know... Solomon, as he was sharing, he's been a disciple now for three years. And uh, he truly loves the lost. But he only loves the lost because he loves God and he loves God's people. So yeah, because of this, he can love the lost as well. But uh, getting to know Solomon a little bit, he loves his family to death. He loves his mom, Tom, or his mom Angela, and his dad, Thomas, right there. And uh, it's been such a privilege and honor to be able to get to know them myself as well. And Thomas and Angela, you guys are incredible. An outstanding example. You know, but I really want to lift up Angela in particular today. You know, Angela has been studying the Bible for about a month. And Angela comes from a very religious background. She, she loves God. She reads her Bible. She, she knows the Word of God. But in her humility, as we're going through the Scriptures she realized that she had never been made into a disciple the way that the Bible teaches. And man, how humble that must have been. But because of that, today Angela has come to get baptized for the forgiveness of sins. 
And as Solomon helps baptize his mom today, I know he's going to be crying. I'm probably going to be crying as well because I can't wait to see the day that my mom gets baptized. But it's because of the love that Solomon had for his mom and his dad that he was willing to tell them the truth, to make them into disciples. And that's incredible. You know, but equally as awesome is that as a worldwide movement, this year we're planning 12 churches. <clears throat> We've got Atlanta, Georgia that's been planted, Auckland, New Zealand, Lima, Peru, Davao, Philippines, Phnom Penh, Cambodia, Kathmandu, Nepal, Johannesburg, South Africa, Appia, Samoa, Indianapolis, Indiana, New Haven, Connecticut, Amsterdam, Netherlands, and Kolkata, India. That's a mouthful right there. And this puts it as at nearly 100 churches worldwide with over 6,000 disciples, you guys. That's incredible. We're actually obeying the Bible in its fullness. You know, and earlier this morning in Johannesburg, they had their inaugural service. And with 21 disciples, they had 156 in attendance. They had two restorations and two baptisms this morning. And next week, Appia, Samoa, and Indianapolis are having their inaugural services as well. Wow. Guys, we're doing this. Yeah. We're not just playing church. We're not just here at a park service to have some good food afterwards. We're really putting this into practice, you guys. And it's incredible. You know, but this is not free. And it's not cheap. Evangelizing the world takes two things, money and people. It's not cheap, but it's worth it. Yeah, right. You know, and as a church, we're raising $53,000 by Thanksgiving. So from today, we have 12 weeks to do so. Right. And how are we going to do this? All of us pitching in together, amen? Yeah. That we're going to fundraise, we're going we're gonna to make it happen. Yeah. But our money is being put to use when these people get baptized in Samoa. Yeah. When these people get baptized in South Africa. People are hearing the gospel all over the world by the money that we are giving here in Southern California. And we've got to give it. I want to challenge all of us. Be fruitful this month. Believe that you can do it. Believe that you can make a disciple this month. There's nothing better that you can do with your time. There's no better way that you can help somebody than by making them into a disciple. And two, I want to challenge everybody, if you haven't already, give $100 towards missions today. There's nothing better that you can give your money to than people's souls being saved. Guys, we have got to love God. We must love God's people. And we have got to love the lost. I love you guys, and to God be all the glory.